This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this Math Guide video, we're going to take a look at the surface area of a rectangular prism. So first, we're going to talk about what surface area is um, as it applies to a rectangular prism. We're then going to walk through example one, then example two. All right. Uh, also, let it be known that MathGuide.com does have text-based uh, lessons, and it does have one on this particular subject, and it also has an interactive quiz. Uh, I'm going to make those links available to you. I'm going to put those in the comments section of this video. So check them out if you need a little bit more detail, or if you'd like to check to see if you really do understand this. Our interactive uh, quiz master will throw a random problem at you and see if you get in get all the uh, surface area correct. All right, let's jump into our examples. So let's talk about what a rectangular prism is. Well, I've shown one right here, uh, and let's talk about then what its shape really is. So of course, this is a two-dimensional picture of a three-dimensional shape. Um, what does that mean? Well, you only see the flat version, but really this this figure has a length, a width, and a height. Okay, so, um, and they're all at right angles from each other. So when you're looking at this figure, uh, there really are uh, more, than one, more than three faces that you see here. There's really this front face, there's this right face, and there's this top face. But just like any box that you would see Every box has a top and a bottom, and those two faces are opposite each other. Uh, every box has a right and a left side, which are opposite each other, which are going to be the same shape. And of course, you got this front side and the back side, which are rectangular shaped, uh, and they're both the same size. So although we're only seeing three rectangles, and believe me, those, those really are rectangles, um, but of course, just because of perspective, it makes them look like parallelograms here, this top and our uh, right side. But really, all the faces of this uh, object are flat, and we call them rectangles for this particular shape. Um, just so you know that um, in general, we, we're, we're going to be looking at the faces, in other words, these flat um, surfaces, six flat surfaces around this uh, figure, top, bottom, right, left, back, and front, but there are edges. The edges are where two faces meet, which I'm going to highlight there. So you could see the height, for instance, that has an edge there. There's actually four edges going up. We only see three of them. Uh, there's edges going left and right. Of course, we could only see two of them, actually three of them if you count this one here. So we, there's these edges where the faces meet. And then where several faces meet, you have these corners, these sharp corners, and we call them vertices. And this particular figure has eight vertices. Okay, so anyway, you kind of get an idea for what's happening there when you talk about those surfaces. Okay, so in the next two sections, we're going to take a look at prisms and we'll calculate their surface areas. All right, so we could see a prism drawn here, and I put some uh, dimensions in here. So uh, here I've got a, uh, a length here that's five feet. Here I've got another width here of three feet, and I've got a height of eight feet. We're gonna calculate the surface area. Now, uh, the surface area of this prism uh, has six faces, so let's talk about them. It has a top, it has a bottom. Um, there is a right side there is a left side. Now, of course, when I'm saying sides, oops, um, I can't talk and write at the same time. When I'm talking about these, um, I'm really talking about faces. So the top face, bottom face, right face, left face. Uh, and then, of course, there's the front and back. Okay, so I've got all these different faces. And what I want to do, of course, is find the area of each one of these, and then I'm going to add them up. 
Um, just for the record, if they ever say the lateral surface area, that means you want just the area of the faces that do not include the top and the bottom. In other words, just the sides that go around the figure, not the top and the bottom. Okay, that would be called the lateral, lateral area. Or sometimes it's called the lateral surface area. Okay, anyway, let's calculate the lateral surface area and then we'll talk about the top and bottom. Okay, so the right side, if you just look at this right rectangle, it's got a height of eight and it's got this bottom here of three, so that's eight times three. It's a rectangle, would be 24. And since I'm multiplying feet times feet, it's feet squared. Okay, so the left side we can't see. The left side's over here. It's the same as the right side because opposite faces on this six-sided prism, six-faced prism, that is, have opposite faces that are congruent. Okay, what's the front side? It's five by eight. Five times eight is 40. And that means the back, which we can't see, also has to have a 40 feet squared. All right, so if I were to add those up, I would get the lateral surface area. So let's see, that would be 80 plus uh, 44. So let's see, 80 plus 44. <laughs> I'm having t difficulties today. That's 48. <laughs> okay, so 80 plus 48, that's 128. So you would say the lateral surface area, which I'm going to abbreviate, would be 128 feet squared. Okay, but I'm going to tell you up the total surface area, so I'm going to include the top. Okay, top and the bottom are the same. 5 times 3 would be the bottom, right? 5 times 3 would be 15. Okay, and then of course the top would be another 15. So if I wanted the total surface area you can see that it's just going to be my lateral surface area that's these four faces combined plus 30 more so if I were to add 30 to that lateral surface area I'm gonna get 158 feet squared okay and if I did add those up 8 plus 10 18 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, 158 feet squared. And there you go, I got my total surface area. Okay, let's take a look at another example. All right, so we have another rectangular prism here, and we have three different units. Our last problem was in feet. These are all in meters. And of course, yes, all our dimensions do have to match. They all have to be the same. Okay, now I left the uh, faces over here on the right side, and so now we're just going to calculate what these areas are. So let's talk about the top. Well, the top is just like the bottom, 7 times 5. That would be 35 meters squared, meters times meters, meters squared. And of course, the top would be the same. All right, let's get the right side. The right side would be 5 times 10, or 50 meters squared. That means the left side, which we can't see at the moment, also is 50. Let's talk about the front side, 7 times 10. So that would be 70 meters squared. Of course, the back side would be 70 meters squared also. Now again, remember, if you wanted just the lateral surface area, again, I'm going to abbreviate that lateral surface area, you would include everything except the top and the bottom. So I would add those up. So let's see, that would be 140 plus 100. So that'd be 240. So my lateral surface area is 240 meters squared because I'm just adding up these four numbers. All right, but I'm interested in the total surface area. So what's the total surface area? Well, you're just going to add all of them together. So remember, we just already added these, 140 plus 100 was 240. Now I'm going to add another 35 plus 35, which is 70. So I'm really just going to tack on 70 on this. 
Okay, so what would that be? That would be zero. So 11, carry the one. That would be 310 meters squared. So 310 meters squared would be the total surface area, which is just the area of all the six rectangles added together. All right, well, this is benmathguy.com. Make sure you go back to the website, check out our text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and our other instructional videos. Take care.